What do all recent super powerful image generation models like DALI or Midjourney have in common? Other than their high computing cost, huge training time and shared hype, they are all based on the same mechanism, diffusion. Diffusion models are a state-of-the-art result for most image tasks, including text-to-image with DALI, but many other image generation-related tasks too, like image and painting, style transfer, and image super resolution. Then latent diffusion, or the well-known stable diffusion, came out, changing everything when it comes to image generation. But I'm not here to talk about all news. We are here to go over the new paper and model released by the same team, Stability AI which is Stable Video Diffusion, the most recent and open source video generation model that you can use right now. It takes either images or text and is able to generate cool videos like these automatically. It can even be used to generate multiple views of an object as if it were in 3D. I'm Louis from What's AI and let's dive into how this new model works. But first, here's a quick word from my friends and generous sponsor of this episode. Today, I'm excited to share ServiceNow's new product for creators. Picture this. You are coding and suddenly you hit a wall. We've all been there. What do you do? You go to the documentation, you start searching and not anymore. Now Assist for Creator is an AI-powered ally that turns your natural language into code, right there on the Now platform. It's not just about speeding up app development, it's about making every line of code count. Simplicity and efficiency first. I've been exploring Now Assist for Creators and it's a very good sidekick for any programmer. It's literally a bridge between IDs and implementation, even for more experienced coders. Try out ServiceNow with the first link below. Before getting to videos, let's do a recap on how Stable Diffusion works for images. Stable Diffusion made training and processing images more efficient and accessible by operating in a compressed or latent space rather than directly on high resolution images. This approach involves encoding an input, which can be text or an image, into a lower dimensional representation. This basically means to teach a model to extract the most valuable information just as we would store a concept in our brain. If you see an image of a cat or see the word cat in a sentence, it will both mean the same to you. Well, it's the same thing with the model's encodings, where all information is placed in a space that makes sense for the model. By seeing thousands and thousands of images and text examples, it is able to build such a representation that is both compressed, information efficient, and with high value compared to an image with lots and lots of pixels that aren't really useful. See here where not even a third of the image is relevant. The model then learns to generate images from this space using noise. Imagine you have a blank canvas where you want to create a picture. In diffusion models, we start with this canvas not completely blank, but filled with random scribbles and patterns, which we can call noise. The noise doesn't have meaningful pattern or structure, it's just random. The job of the diffusion model is like that of an artist who will gradually transform these random scribbles into a coherent detailed image. It does this in a step-by-step -step process. At each step, it carefully adjusts the scribbles, slowly shaping them into recognizable parts of the image. This process is guided by the model's training, where it has learned how to make these adjustments by looking at many examples. So we initially took many image examples and randomly applied noise to them, which you can see as scribbles, and provided those scribbles to the model. Then we ask it to try and recreate the image. Since we know all the scribbles that we progressively gave to the model during training, we can correct it and make it learn to give the right scribbles at each step. The underlying concept is that the model, during training, has learned the right parameters to apply to the noise to recreate an image that closely resembles the training images. And as we saw, this is done in a compressed space. And this is also why it's pretty hard to generate images that the model haven't seen before. The last thing we need to do is to get back to a real image, instead of this model's representation, which we called encoding. So we need to decode or transform this latent representation back into a high-resolution image. It's basically like taking an older, damaged or unclear small painting and redrawing it on a very large canvas. It will be the same picture, but much bigger and clearer. The decoding process involves reconstructing the detailed features, textures, and colors that were compressed in the latent space, effectively upsampling the image to its full size and resolution. 
we can now generate a new image efficiently, sending only some text as a prompt, as we've all been playing with either using DALI, Midjourney, or Stable Diffusion based apps. When moving to video, the challenge is not just to transform noise into a single image, but into a series of images or frames that change over time in a smooth and consistent way. Consistency is the biggest issue here, as no errors are allowed for credibility. We can directly spot when something's wrong, since our brain is wired to spot anomalies in nature to survive. It just feels off and weird if something like this happens. Dealing with time, or in other words, videos, requires additional capabilities in the model to understand and replicate how objects and scenes change over time, essentially how to adjust the noise not just for one image, but for a flowing sequence of images that make up a video. Just like its image counterpart, Stable Video Diffusion operates in latent space. But with a critical addition, it includes temporal layers. These layers are specifically designed to handle the dynamics of video sequences, focusing on the continuity and flow of frames over time. This is extremely important as we cannot simply generate 30 images and squash them to make a video. Each frame needs to have access to the others during training in order to ensure consistency. To achieve realistic video synthesis, Stable Video Diffusion is pre-trained with images using Stable Diffusion and then retrained a second time with videos with this temporal layer added. The pre-training on images allows the model to understand our world with lots of examples of various objects and scenes. Then, the model learns to replicate complex aspects of videos such as movement, changes in scenery, and interaction between objects with a similar training process but with multiple frames generated at the same time. Finally, for quality, we add a final fine-tuning step where we repeat this video training process but using only high-quality videos to further improve the results. In videos, not only does the appearance of objects matter, but so does their movement and how they change over time. The object cannot change color or shape over time. It also needs to follow real-world dynamics depending on what it is. It moves differently if it's a rock or a cat. The model is trained to capture these dynamics, ensuring that the generated video have a natural and fluid motion. For the most technical of you, Stable Video Diffusion incorporates temporal convolution and attention layers. So the same approach as in most recent vision models to produce more representations through feature maps and have them share information with each other. These layers are added after every spatial convolution and attention layer in the regular Stable Diffusion model, enabling the generation of consistent and coherent video sequences from text or image inputs. Stable Video Diffusion provides a robust video representation that can be fine-tuned for various applications. This includes not just text-to-video synthesis, but also other tasks like multi-view synthesis, making it a versatile tool for different video generation needs. The model achieves state-of-the-art results in multi-view synthesis while requiring significantly less computational resources than previous methods. Just like Stable Diffusion for images, it makes video generation more accessible for a wider range of users and applications. Of course, it's not perfect, but it's getting there. Long videos are still quite more challenging than short ones. They also found that their approach didn't generate lots of motion in videos. If you try it, I'd love to know your thoughts on the results you get. In any case, sharing this new open source model is a very good step in the right direction. I'm excited to play more with it and see what people build from this model. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the Stable Video Diffusion model. I invite you to read the full paper for a deeper understanding of the approach and their new data curation process to build the dataset and further improve the results. They also shared lots of amazing insights to build and train better generative models. If you want to stay up to date with new research in the field and these kinds of videos, I invite you to subscribe to my free newsletter where I share all my projects and insights related to artificial intelligence. Thank you for watching the whole video and I will see you in the next one with more AI advancements.